every time a method is called, it creates a copy of any of the primitive variables. So and primitives are any uh, integer, float, double, boolean, uh, anything that basically begins with a lowercase letter right here. Uh, strings a bit different, but all these we're gonna look at are gonna create uh, a copy of this value and send it in. And every time you call a method, it creates uh, copies of uh, values and modifies those. And that's what they're describing here in the book. And the most important thing in this 8.2 section is the base case. So for us, what's the base case? It's not always true that the base case will be the smallest value, but you'll see that that's very frequently the case, uh, that the base case will be the smallest value that makes sense. So for us, when we reached zero, we don't want to count to negatives. So when we reach zero, we print blast off and then don't do anything else. So this is what we call the base case right here. Let's go ahead and label that. Base case. And this is the non-base case, which is called the recursive case. Now, how do you know it's the recursive case? Because the recursive case will always contain a call to the method that you're in. There are some times where you have two methods that call each other back and forth, but let's not worry about that for now. We'll worry about that in the future when we need to. But for now, our methods are gonna call themselves in the recursive case. I wanna make this run forever. Uh, they gave us an example here that runs forever that absolutely works, totally fine. How am I gonna make this run forever? Well, the way you do it is you don't have a base case. So I want to completely eliminate this base case right here. So I can delete it. So I think I can delete it. There we go. Of course, you can't have an else without an if. So we'll delete that else. And now I'm gonna Alt Shift F to format. So it's gonna print N and then it's gonna call countdown n minus one. So it's gonna start at 10. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna run for real yet. We'll do that and we'll have some fun, but I'm gonna do the debug here. So this should be quite simple as to what's happening. It's gonna call countdown with 10. I can see 10 right here for n, and I'm just gonna hit a uh, step into. So it's gonna print out 10, nine, eight, seven, probably what you expect. Now notice we don't check anything for zero. Okay, so it's just gonna keep printing out naively and subtracting one. You tell a computer to do something, it's gonna keep doing it. Look at that. This should all be very expected. Okay, now how far does this go? That's a good question. I wonder if they'll let me just run it from here. Oh, there we go. All right, so I just hit regular run, which made it go very fast. So I hope you weren't planning to see negative infinity show up because uh, in the real world, infinity doesn't exist. It's only a concept, uh, but it keeps going negative, negative, negative. At some point, it can't go anymore. But what is actually happening? It looks like we hit uh, 11,000 something. So it ran approximately 11,000 times. You'll notice that there's some red here. What I wanna do is look at all this red in a nicer way. So I'm gonna change this print outline to just a print. I wanna put some spaces in there because otherwise it's gonna look really ugly. Actually, there's a negative sign. That'll work okay. So it's all the numbers but no new lines in between. The reason I did that is so we can read the exception much better. This exception is called a stack overflow error. What that is, don't worry about anything beyond that. The stack over the top, the top exception that you see is the one you most need to pay attention to. So what does stack overflow mean? Well, this calls countdown, then countdown calls countdown, and what's happening is creating a copy of this integer n. There's only so many copies of n you can have. How many can you have? over 10,000, but not much more than 10,000. So there are limitations here to recursion, and we just saw the limitation right here. So that's good to keep in mind, and this is what will happen if you don't have a base case. 
Now I'm gonna undo all this. Well, let's hit stop. Don't try not to edit while you're in a debug mode. So I'm gonna undo these changes I made to fix this so it works. All right, so I showed you what happened if you don't have a base case. There's another way to have a stack overflow error. The recursive case must make the problem more simple, meaning uh, you have to get closer to the base case. So we gave 10 right here, and every time we run it, it drops the value by one until it hits zero. So how can we take this recursive case and make it not get closer to zero? Well, that's easy. I can just not subtract one. Look at that, it's 10 all the time because it kept calling countdown with 10. And you're gonna see the same, I don't wanna scroll up here, but you're gonna see the same stack overflow error happening. Uh, there's another way to screw it up. Uh, here I mess it up by not subtracting one. I could do the wrong arithmetic I started at a positive value, I was hoping to hit zero, and of course adding one to a positive value is never gonna get to zero. This will count up each time, and of course at some point you're gonna run into problems. So lots of ways to mess up recursion, and again, when you do it, you're gonna see a stack overflow error. Go ahead and uh, not print a new line. There we go. So now I can read the uh, Stack Overflow error exception right there. You can right click and wrap. Oh, I've already turned on wrap text. Uh, if you don't wrap text, uh, it will just run off the end with a dot, dot, dot. So this only made it to 1,030 and then ran out of horizontal room. Uh, but the nice thing here, oh, and I can't even see, this is not good. I can't even see the Stack Overflow error here. So you really do, you probably want to turn on, how did I get that? wrap text, control R, and then you'll be able to see the uh, exception right there. And I can hold down Alt and scroll. Just to warn you, you're gonna see like 10,000 of these lines, so sometimes when you're scrolling, it might think, you may think something's frozen, but just remember you can grab this over here and you can scroll uh, using the scroll bar itself by grabbing that little handle and scrolling that way. You may think it's weird that there's some Output below here. The reason that happens is because there's two different output streams. One of them is the out, system.out, and the other one is system.error. And they, can, they won't always print in the same order. Uh, so right here we have 5142 was the first value we saw at the bottom. If I run it again and scroll to the bottom, Oh, we got 5142, but it won't, sometimes you might see the first one will be 5143 and 5142 is like way up above all these errors. So just keep that in mind. So this is a broken countdown method. Uh, I could, if I, if I did want to count up, no problem, I can add one, but then my base case better be a number bigger than the one that I start with. This should work, should do a count up, boom, 10, 11, 12, etc. It gets to 99, but once we hit 100, we see blast off. So that would be a count up instead of a count down.